Good morning and welcome to The Wise Why. I'm here with Joanne Herman. Jo and I met, can you hear me? Yeah, oh yes. Of course. (laughs) So I love it when you go live because you don't quite know what's there. And Robin, hopefully you can hear us now. So it'd be lovely because I can see your comment, but I can't comment before we go live. So I met Jo when I worked for Hanwha Tequin, which was previously Samsung. And we worked really closely on the IT channel marketing. And we actually had a blast. It was a really good time. We had a lot, a lot of fun and I learned a huge amount. But as we all know, this platform is not about me. It is about the guest and what they bring and their whys. So Joe, please take the stage and tell everybody about who you are. <laughs> oh, well, um, thank you, Kirsty. Um, well, firstly, Kirsty, it's a pleasure to be on your show, um, opening um, Doors Consultancy. It really is. Um, I think we've known each other coming up 10 years now, I suppose. Oh, wow. Which is crazy. Right. Where, where's that time gone? <laughs> Wow, and we've had children in that time as well. We were um, because I met you years before I, I did Samsung. Before we so got yes, married. Oh. Before yes. we got married. And I remember talking about your wedding shoes as well. <laughs> and this is what I love about you. See, the thing about Kirsty is I'm switching it back now, talking about you. But um, <laughs> the thing, you had these pink shoes under your wedding dress and they were kind of jelly shoes, weren't they? Or kind of, they were designer like shoes and I, I I was thinking wow this is brilliant I love the fact that we were on the same wavelengths about doing things differently and this is what I'll talk about later but yes sorry um back to it <laughs> I'm finding this environment very strange I have to say because uh, only yesterday I was interviewing um a girl uh, a tax director um because being in marketing I usually talk and listen to the other person about their own journey, their own story, and um, and, and push that by various channels. So I really hope I don't bore the listeners today talking about me. But I'm Jo. I'm a chartered marketer, mummy, um, of five years. Uh, well, chartered over well over ten years now, um, but been a marketing mummy for five years. So um, I'm currently working for the Chartered Institute of Taxation. I've been working there for three years and that was after I had George. Um, I live near Wimbledon with my husband Peter and he works for the university UAL. Um, Plug there, sorry I am a marketer, (laughs) it's in me isn't it? (laughs) So I hear you and I Jamie hear you on that because I love to plug my husband but my husband and this is really interesting hides from social media so he sits there going what are you doing next and I'm like well I'm going live today and he's like right I'm not sure he's ever actually watched one. Which is fine. I'm, I'm actually really cool about that because I don't need his validation. I just love him to pieces. And I love the fact that you share uh, how much you absolutely adore Peter. I think it's brilliant. So we've had a couple of people join us. And Joanna Jones, thank you. I'm so pleased you found it, Joanna, because I can't comment whilst we're live. Um, Joe, we work together in Samsung and you've now gone into, um, you've now a mummy and you work in and a, a world that I cannot even start to imagine. And you've got some really strong principles that you stick to, which I find interesting. And um, I wondered if you could explain, because I know somebody was asking about you to talk about personal branding and cake. Right. <laughs> now, so- I like to eat cake and I like to make cake. I don't eat that much cake. My daughter thinks everything will be saved by cake. So could you expand more on that? <laughs> So um, I have to admit the the cake concept um, hasn't derived from me, but it's something um, that I hold as a value um, and it's an approach. And this has stemmed from a chap called Brad Smith. Now, if you Google Brad Smith, he was he's a consultant. Um, He is. every Monday there's like a donkeys, donkeys um, every Monday morning. He brings everybody together to have a conflab um, about marketing. Now he came up with cake and it really resonated with me because it stands for being creative, adaptable, kind and empathetic. And I feel that that mixture um, of cake is everything that I try to pull into both, uh, you know, I'm a marketer, but also I'm a figure skater. And to actually have those qualities is really important because especially now and since COVID, um, you know, we all have there's various mental es- mental health issues. You have you don't know what's happening. Um, you can hide behind social media. So you ha- really have to be kind to people. And I think also becoming a mother, um, 
my empathy has like gone through the roof and I think yeah so so cake is really a fundamental value I I I live by on a professional professional and a personal side oh Um, thank you thank you for sharing that and what's interesting is I know that I know my why I went back to work but I'm, I'm interested for you to share the, because you have to make that decision. And I'm a much older mum, you know, I was 45 when Bobby came along. So, you know, quite old. And um, it was a, quite challenging actually for me to adapt to being a mum. And then I, I kind of missed work. I really missed that routine. And, and this is really bad. I missed my own money. So, um, <laughs> Did you have any of those whys? I'm just interested. Do you know what? It's it's refreshing to hear you say that because I just thought it was just me. I think because I became a mum at 41 um, and it, it just, your whole world shifts because you've built up your career. Um, you know, you've been on that journey. Um, I mean, I've been on many journeys because I've worked for so many different companies and verticals. And I actually found that it was strange because after six months, well, for six months when the health visitor came in to visit you, um, you know, how are you? And I, again, spinning it. And I was thinking, I'm fine. How are you? How, how are you doing? How many babies have you seen? You know, and because I love to find out, I love people and I like finding out about them, you know, stop talking about me. But as soon as six, seven months went by, bam, it was almost overnight. And I, yeah, I had postnatal anxiety. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't sleep very well. I was really worried. And I'm a very carefree person. Um, I love change. I'm very adaptable. But yes, when this little boy came along, I thought, oh my goodness. Um, Wow. And it just happened. So um, I think it, it did take me some time. It took me well over a year to kind of get through that. But you know what? Sometimes through times of difficulties, you learn from that. And I learned so much. Um, mm-hmm. I uh, and, and I think this is another reason why for the past few years I've been trying to help people, especially during COVID and where I've been working in terms of personal branding and how intrinsically important it is it is to them. Um, you know, to, to it's not an egotistical thing. It's something that we all have a brand. As soon as George was born, he had his brand. We, we named him. We had that responsibility of naming him. Um, and what you do with that brand is, is entirely up to you, but you are guided by your parents. So um, I did find it a, a struggle. But then as soon as I got back to work, ping, I was back to Joe. I was back to Joe Herman and I was able to help others. I'm helping, see, helping, there was, somebody said, do I have attachment issues to George? And I t- said, no, because he went to nursery um, just after he was one year years old. Um, so I didn't think that, but as soon as I went to work, he had the best of me because I was happy being at work and I had the best of, you know, the family and myself. So I totally understand where you're coming from, 101%. So that's really interesting because I didn't have it. I I was desperate to go back to work. And I remember the health visitor saying to me, where are you struggling? And and that, and again, like you, I was turning the the questions back to her. And that's what we do. We worked in sales. So of course we do. But um, what I did find was I suddenly found that my driving force was not having my own independence, my own money. But that really came into play for me at the end of, well, when COVID hit, because I'd left Hanwha to set up my own business. Then I had to put it dormant because our daughter needed us because she was only three and a half at the time. And then suddenly she'd got to school and I fell to pieces. I don't mean I I didn't get postnatal depression because she was much older, but I'd lost my identity because I didn't know who I was anymore. So I joke about this, but I actually went off and crocheted a jumper. And I really did. I'd never crocheted before. And I crocheted this jumper and each stitch to me represents a step on my way back to setting up Opening Doors Consultancy. So thank you so much for sharing that, because I'm sure there are loads of people out there who have at some point lost all their confidence, had to restart. And then they found that nugget in your case work, in my case, a jumper, and it's brought you back to who you are. So thank you. Oh, no problem, gosh. There's... um. Obviously, you've gone back to work. Yes. You were asked if there were attachment or disorder, an attachment issue. I, I talk about just attachment disorder because of 
the well we all know where my daughter came from so I'm not gonna put that online and that's me bringing my boundaries but um yeah aha moments I can't help I can't help it I know I'm an 80s like 90s <laughs> I'm not about to start singing take on me but I did put it in there because I loved uh, who didn't do you know what I do you know what I've so I've been really thinking about this um and I have to say for today I have there's this thing prepare to fail what was it um fail to prepare and prepare to fail so I've really been trying to think about these aha moments and I had an aha moment thinking why am I here why am I doing this why am I and you know why it's because I'm stepping out of my comfort zone it's not yes it's kind of about me but I'm trying to help other people so if there's something that I say that resonates and you know if you want to read some of my blogs or if you need any help with marketing you know i'm here and and you know kirsty's here as well there you are <laughs> kind of the you don't but, have to plug me i didn't bring you on here to plug no, me. No, no, <laughs> but, yeah, this, it's in me it's kind of yeah it's, it's like a stick of rock marketing is kind of um but um I, I think a big aha moment and it's actually going back to samsung i remember sitting in the car park uh, before the interview and I got there half an hour early again I was preparing I was writing notes and and I sat in the car park and it just hit me like a truck thinking why am I here I'm this is a major company I'm going to be interviewed you know for I'm you know why and I, I, I really nearly got my hand and turned that ignition and thought I'm just going to drive home because I just and I and then I just thought to myself and I remember reading an affirmation that Richard Branson kind of said, you know, if you don't think that you can do a job or do something, do it, Nike, you know, just do it and then learn as you go on. And actually, that kind of gives me still goosebumps because I followed. I just thought, do do the things and regret the things that you do do but then rather the things that you don't do. And, and this is another thing that I live by, you know, just, just do it. You just don't know because other things might snowball. Even if I didn't get that job, maybe somebody said, say something, oh, well, there's another job here, there, or, you know, and I remember sitting and that was an aha moment um, because uh, where we were in it, Samsung, it was right next to Broadlands, the museum. And I was watching the minis go around in the, the skid pan, you know, kind of, and I just thought, no, just go in. And I remember sitting there in the interview and another aha moment was in that interview because Peter Ainsworth was there and he was, you know, um, uh, was he your manager? Um, he was no, so, so Peter wasn't. I had Simon Shirley and Simon, if you're listening, I hope you are. Oh, hi, Simon. To <laughs> this day, um, Simon, I said to him recently when I saw him, I didn't realise what a mentor Simon really was. He talks about the power of yet. For him, it's just an everyday thing. For me, I'm like, oh my goodness. And Simon to this day is still someone that I just, uh, in fact, a lot of the people from Hanwha, I can, uh, you know, Samsung, because obviously I was there through the crossover. They are so important to me. And, you know, yeah. Peter is actually going to come on the Wise Why in a few oh, weeks. So, brilliant. Yeah, so no, oh, Peter because why forward. wouldn't I tap up my network of people who have supported and helped me and you coming into into samsung at that point was so important because i was a lone voice at that point championing the it channel and you'd come from there and suddenly there was you and there was charlotte and it was like yes there are people who know what i'm talking about when i mention a dmr a var and an yeah, yeah, VAR, no. i know I mean, we go, yeah. i think it was funny because when I was working at Misco, I worked with so many channel partners, um, you know, kind of Toshiba, Epson, Lenovo. They were really great guys. Apple, you know, and then Samsung as well. So I guess coming from that IT background really helped me. But I think another aha moment and going back was in that interview because I remember um, Peter saying, well, what would you do? And I and I actually said, and this is a, a key mantra I live by to, uh, you know, to um, to make a difference, do different. And I've been to so many events where it's all about the specification, what it does, the specification of a camera. And I thought, it's so boring. I don't want to hear about that. I want to position it in the minds of the customer. So I said, well, rather than that, I would actually strip all of that out. Who cares about what, why don't 
WD camera, you know, <laughs> my, my, dad, right. are, that's what my dynamic <laughs> range camera can do, or Vandal Dome or whatever. And I and I thought, well, look at where it's actually being used. And for IFSEC that year, because I think I had two months to actually pull together the stand with the team I'd put together. Mm -hmm. um, we story story told. So we actually tried to position it within the minds of the banking industry with the Samsung selfie machine, which was brilliant. I love <laughs> photos, if anybody knows. So I was like permanently on there um, to demonstrate the cameras on, um, you know, um, cash points. And then there was obviously the, the whole um, transport industry. Um, so it was and it was a bit of a risk because I remember remember when it was it was a three day event at um, what was it, Excel and. Uh, I remember the guys raging going, the head of, I don't know, the guy in Korea is coming and all of his minions. And I was thinking, why is everybody stressing out so much? And it's because if he was not happy with the brand, where it was, the positioning, and obviously that storytelling piece, um, he shows obviously his, you know, he wouldn't be happy. And um, it was it was so good that Peter empowered me and gave me he, he was not somebody that um, micromanaged. He gave me the autonomy, autonomy and the empowerment to carry on with the team and do that. And it worked. Um, yeah. So, yes, but it was it's it was so great because I remember working with you and it's just that energy, you know, <laughs> and I just I just think to myself that, you know, you can get the job done if you've got the right people. Again, another Branson one. <laughs> I do follow <laughs> Was that IFSEC, the first one we had the ice cream on the stand? Or was no, it the following year? That was could have been the following year. Right. Because yeah. I, I went to an event and I stole that idea. And I remember giving oh. it to Tim and saying, Tim, you've got to put ice cream on the stand. So yes, everybody out there, I am responsible for the ice cream. And yes, it, it, it is like awesome. and it's worth going to IFSEC purely for the ice cream. And I hope they, they keep that going. Joe, thank you. This is amazing. Um did you ever, because you started in sales, and this is what I think is really interesting about you, is you, you started, like I did, in sales. Well, actually, I started as an actor and then survived and went into sales. Oh. But you started in sales and now you're in marketing. Yes. So how and why did you make that transition? So, again, another great manager, Andrew Todd of Cabell Publishing. Um, they're still here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, I, so I started out, he was really good because I um, took a year, uh, took a few months out after I graduated from university. Um, I did a history of art and architecture degree at UEA, which was brilliant. And I still love that. Um, but, um, the Cabell Publishing, they dealt with the BBC Proms, um, the um, Barbican programme, the, uh, uh, trying to think, lots of artistic programme and publications, the BBC Symphony Orchestra, et cetera, et cetera. So some really kind of big, uh, you know, brands basically that we were trying to get advertising space for. And I was actually selling advertising space. I was in amongst lots of sales guys and obviously being a salesperson um i needed to actually meet a target and get um advertising into certain booklets at certain times of the year now i found myself trying to not grab the money and run um because some sales sales guys were like right we'll have a full page spread of like three thousand pounds van cleef and arpels for example or bmw they take the money and that's it whereas with me i would be contacting local schools um certain smaller um certain smaller companies but i would be building up their relationships with them saying hey how about you could go into the barbican um you know um program the bbc symphony um how about i could do a small quarter page in the bbc proms program and i actually try to retain them and build a relationship rather than taking and going and go see you you know big cash but no um return you know kind of uh, retention is what i'm trying to say so and then I actually found myself putting proposals together and thinking, well, you know, how this is what's going to be happening for the next quarter and the next half of a year. How about you could go into this, this and this? The money didn't come in, but it was long term value of the customer. And then I thought to myself, what? I'm actually not I'm kind of selling, but I'm also marketing. I'm showing the value and benefits. And 
I was intimidated by some of these sales guys. They'd be standing up with the phones, you know, kind of walking and pacing up and down. So after that, I decided to, um, I, I, well, I started off in Wimbledon, then I worked in the city and that really opened up everything. I worked with a chap called Errol Damlin. He founded Wonga.com. He actually did call me back because he started a company called CableNet. And this was before the Twin Towers came down. So that's kind of way back then. And it was an online portal. And I just found the explosion of the internet and technology incredible. I still feel blessed to have been in that period of 1999 to 2000 of, you know, that emergence of the internet, you know. So, um, and he actually asked me back, Errol, because he, he could see I was very enthusiastic and keen and I was a marketing exec, exec at that time. But it was funny, I actually refused, declined, I didn't say refuse, <laughs> but I declined to work for Wonga because he explained the concept and I thought, I'm not sure if I, um, I don't think I have to love the products mm -hmm. and I didn't feel comfortable of borrowing money, you know, kind of, you've got to pay it back. So, um, I mean, he's, a, he's an amazing guy, his brain. And then I worked for another entrepreneur. Then I worked in the energy industry, the, the, you know, so I think from, so what I'm saying, why I moved from sales is because I wasn't that type of salesperson. I was more of a relationship building, um, person and I was I was I was marketer I didn't know what I was doing but then when I started doing my CIM everything clicked I was just mm -hmm. like oh right um you know everything just fell into place it was like pieces of the puzzle um so yeah thanks to to the CIM that really helped me oh that's that's absolutely brilliant and I know that I know where you are because I started sales training which is interesting because I loved sales training. I, I, sales to me was always weird. I, I always wanted to be build that relationship and get that customer retention and that return yeah. and, and the return of investment. But and, and that's probably because I taught sales training and I did sales training at the, the, the real start of the internet. So I launched BT Open Zone onto the UK did market. You? Wow. Yeah, and I, I know people will go, what? And it's like, and I worked for um, a company called Big Picture and I was a nationwide sales trainer for people like Intel. So I can remember selling Pentium 4 processors and teaching people or rather coaching people on how to sell the Pentium 4 and then the uplift to the Centrino platform and then the core oh, wow. I range. So the kind of that's where my background comes from. So we've had some lovely, interesting comments come in. Um, we've had Rabina, who is just adorable. She loves my journey with my jumper, which is very kind. And Annette says good morning. <laughs> and you probably don't remember Ben Lewis, but he was around at the same time because he was one of my customers when I worked oh, for Samsung. Okay. He says good morning. You've got Joanna James, who's found you, and of course Robin, so that's great. And um, Ravina said, Oh, Joe, um, I live in Norwich. I love visiting UEA and the Sculpture Park and the Sainsbury Centre. Yes. Is. Now, interesting enough, my, one of my friends who may or may not eventually hear this was one of the tutors at UEA. But oh. uh, it's in my past life and I haven't seen him for about 30 years. But yeah, so Billy, if you're ever listening, hello. Uh, so yes, Joe, I can't thank you enough. So this is the moment where I get to say to you, you've been in the hot seat and I know it's incredibly difficult to be in there. You are welcome to throw a question or two back at me and see how I stand being in, or rather sit, being in the hot seat. <laughs> okay, so um, my question to you is, and I've kind of wrote it down here, um, tell me something about yourself um, that others may be surprised to know about you. Okay, so if you haven't read my LinkedIn page, so unless you've read it, you probably don't know that I was born with a speech impediment. So I, until I was five, I couldn't make any consonant sounds. So I don't have a uvula. I was removed when I was four and a half and it was grafted over a hole at the base of the nasal pharynx. And then I had to do a wealth of speech therapy, which to be honest, I hated. And I found drama classes. And if you listen really carefully, you will hear I've got a slight lisp it sounds like I've got a sibilant S and that is actually a kickback to the fact that I was born with a speech impediment. <laughs> wow, that's, uh, gee, I, I have, you, you, I think I read a post um, that you put yeah. on that. Yeah, wow, gosh. So, but you wouldn't know, you would not know. And that's about 
confidence and and Lorna McGrath who took me under her wing when I was five and said I will help you so I first public spoke actually in public using my voice when I was six and my mum and my dad were there and they were cheering me on and I said an A.A. Milne uh, poem and I got an award because they were so impressed because you know it was really difficult you know you can't imagine and we, I, I'm very interested in childhood trauma because although it wasn't a traumatic childhood it is a traumatic situation that I had yes. and so I had to really go back and look at my who I am and reconnect with that little girl because that little girl was very angry and frustrated and whilst it didn't really I was horrific when I couldn't communicate but when I started to communicate the temper dis dissipated it went away but when I hit my teenage years fight and flight really came into play and um, I it wasn't I was angry I was shamed I was embarrassed I didn't and I couldn't work out why I was what people say acting out but it's not I was chandlering which is a very specific word so I'm really interested in childhood trauma and how it affects you in your teenage years and then as an adult so yeah it's it's definitely spurred me on and it's the reason why I set up opening doors well, do you do you find having that difference and having I mean that was something I was really you actually got me thinking about through this whole experience um and it's that that key kind of thing I have of to, to be different you know to um to make a difference do difference do differently but being different when you're younger it is really hard and you're in it and you can't see but it when you get older it makes you so much stronger yeah it, you know it really kind of bulletproofs you um it's the resilience it's, yeah because I mean my mum's from Trinidad and Tobago and my dad's from Nottingham and we lived in Trinidad and we came back and I remember being bullied at school you know why are you doing I mean it was just because I looked different I looked like Mowgli from the Jungle Book <laughs> kind of when I came Aww. back I was quite, so, you know I really he's so cute but you know the um um I'm not saying I'm cute that's really good but, um, <laughs> but no what I'm saying is just you know I look different I sounded different um I did different things and um it was just what I knew um and other children I guess children can be cruel but you know so you know in some ways but I didn't now looking back um and my mum she's honestly she's given me so much confidence my mum used to be psychiatric um, she was psychiatric nurse she was, she's retired she always used to say to me why don't you become a nurse and I said mum I would be in bits every single time I don't know how you do it I don't know how the how nurses out there today do it um just to compartmentalize and that's the thing my mum helped people and in a way I'm trying to my mum has given me so much confidence and resilience for this world that we're in and I'm trying to help people in different ways you know kind of through marketing or skating I know it's probably not as much you know as health but um you know, even at work, if something goes wrong, I think to myself, well, you know, nobody's died. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It puts it in perspective. So I take my hats off to the NHS. I really do. Me, me too. On that note, what a lovely note to finish on. Thank you so much for your time this morning. It is an absolute pleasure. Yes, um, you will probably, if you don't can't see the comments, let me know and I'll make sure you know what people are saying. And there will be comments throughout the day. Thank you. What an absolute joy. Thank you, Joy. And thank you to all the people who joined us this morning. Thank you, Kirsten.